Welcome. In this uh, short video, I want to introduce to you the first results of a new academic paper on green rental premia. So what does the energy efficiency uh, gain do to the rental gains and cash flow that you can gain? And as you can see, we have uh, done a small Dutch exercise and I will present now to you during the ERIS seminar on education um, the results. So. In essence, it's quite rather simple. We have been looking at energy efficiency in the real estate literature for almost 10, 15 years. And some people say even it's a no-brainer because on the household side, you will see that people pay the utility bill, which is quite steep, especially in the Netherlands. These numbers are almost 20% of what people have in total on a monthly basis. On the other hand, it's what does this energy use do to global warming. And then we're looking at carbon footprint, which is more than 30% of the total comes from our residential energy use. So in both cases, we have a very good incentive to reduce these two. You don't want to pay too much on your utility bill, and society doesn't want to have the carbon footprint. So improving energy efficiency should something that some, be something that everybody wants. But still, we don't make the traction. We don't really make the improvements that are possible. So maybe... After doing the improvement, we also need to know how much can we increase the rent. And will that increase in rent pay off what we then will have eventually in uh, the car carbon footprint or maybe also the, the low utility bill. And that is what we are looking into. So this literature and this study fits with what we call the energy efficiency gap. That's the difference between what is possible technically, and there's a lot possible on energy efficiency, and what is being done. And that gap between those two has to do with the fact that we have to balance the, the benefits from a finance perspective with the cost. And the costs are clear because they're immediate and people know what to pay because you can just get a receipt. But you don't know for sure what will be the benefit. So some of those uncertainties that make people hesitate about the sustainability steps that they can take have to do with things, things like imperfect information, but also the uncertainty of cost, future benefits, but also hassle. A lot of consumers and households just simply don't want to make the effort to take the step towards energy efficiency. They think it's complex and takes a lot of time and energy, so they don't want to do that. Now, it's very important that we know what the benefits are, because these benefits will be the only things that people will have to take into account and then decide to take the step. So one of these benefits is the rental premium. How much can a landlord increase rents after the energy efficiency increase has been done? Because we know the costs have been there, will there be enough benefits from a higher rent to make that step? So, in the case of housing, there's a lot of literature. On the one hand, there's a lot of literature on owner-occupied houses, which is typical, and well-documented, because we know the transaction prices and we have a lot of data on a vast scale. For rental, it's different. We don't have a lot of literature on rental, and that's uh, sad, because actually the rental markets across Europe are the ones that need the energy efficiency improvements most. These are vast markets. Typically, the dwellings in the rental market are somewhat older and therefore less energy efficient. They also house the lower income groups within society. And some of these people even suffer from what we call energy poverty. Their utility bill is sometimes even as high as their monthly rent. So there are a lot of reasons why it's interesting to look at the rental market, but we haven't done that yet because data have been limited. I can list a few titles here. Franz first has an excellent paper on rental premiums uh, in Wales. It's a small area, well documented. Sean Bond and Divine have a paper on what has been the effect on US multifamily homes. And Sven Bienert has recently released a paper on Germany. But we are still struggling with getting the large-scale results out. So this fits with that literature, because what we will do is we're going to look at over 13,000 uh, Dutch homes and their rents. Uh, we have data from 2012 onwards, and we're going to look at their energy label and energy performance index, a number which is very common across Europe. It's hard to see in one slide probably, but in the middle you see the summary statistics of the total sample, which is over the 13,000. On the left of this uh, screen, you can see what is the regulated market, the lower income. And there you can see that typically the dwellings are a little bit older, almost 30, 80 years old, and they're also a little bit smaller and therefore cheaper. On the right you'll see what we call the unregulated rents in the Netherlands, which are the higher rents that you can see in the average rent, but they're also younger, the homes, and they're also larger. All these quality differences will be absorbed in our analysis. 
So what we do is a hedonic analysis. We're going to do regressions. We're going to see whether the quality difference we can observe and then add the energy efficiency. And if homes have been improved, will the rent be increased proportionally? Now, the moment of suspense is unbearing, so therefore here are the results of the Dutch jury. So you can see already I graphed it here from A until G, which is the lowest level of energy efficiency. And there we start and the graph goes up, which means if you look at the vertical axis, you can almost get a 10% increase in rent if you get to A. From the average, which is D, that's uh, almost a 5% step. So you lose over 5%. Uh, from D to G and you gain 5% in rent from D to A. So if your current dwelling is D, D, you will know that you can increase in the Netherlands at least with 5%. So I can wrap up some of those conclusions. You can get the full detail of the analysis in the paper which is available also on the IRIS website. We know after this analysis that positive energy labels which are A and B to some extent C, they are correlating with higher rents. There's a dispersion of rents of almost 10% from A to, to G. We can see that these results are also robust for the fact that we have these differences in, in quality but also location of the dwelling. So that is not driving our results. So overall, energy efficiency is indeed capitalized in the rental case, which is most of the case in the Netherlands in the regulated market, which has to do with the fact that our lawmakers want energy efficiency to be part of the energy and rent scoring system. So better energy efficiency also allows the regulated landlords to increase the rent accordingly. In the non-regulated market or the unregulated market, the free market of rents, we see less evidence. We see that the marketplace is not charging the rent that they could actually get because of the lower utility bill. Some of these results are also highlighted in an infographic which is here available in Dutch and which is important because well, not everybody in society reads academic papers, unfortunately. So therefore we made this infographic and you can see in a very simple way what the effects are on prices, which is a different study, but also in this case the rents, both for offices, retail and housing on the far right, which is the results from this study. If you want to know more about this type of research, please visit uh, the project that we have been working on together with eight different uh, markets in Europe, which is called rentalcall.eu. In rentalcall, we have been looking at getting the information on rental premiums and vacancies, the, the benefits, but also the cost, and making a tool available for every European who is considering to make the step. Please visit our website, use our tool, it's free and available, and we will make you make the effort to bridge the energy efficiency gap. I hope to see you there.